take a lot of computers and robots to Mars, but we don't take people to Mars. This is the rocket that can take people to Mars. This is the difference. There's a different set of requirements when you have human lives at stake. Nuclear energy has gone through quite the renaissance in the past few years as a means of creating electricity and powering the entire industry on Earth. NASA will partner with our longtime partner, DARPA, to develop and demonstrate advanced nuclear thermal propulsion. However, the extent of its popularity has also expanded in the world of space exploration as nuclear energy, thanks to its high potency, great energy density and incredible reliability, would all drive forward space exploration much more rapidly than it's developing already. As a result, numerous companies have started development of their own nuclear-powered rockets, with some of them estimating a fully functional rocket to hit the skies as early as 2027. As a result, it is highly likely that a nuclear-powered rocket will be the cornerstone of our inhabitation of Mars. However, before we tackle this, we will first have to understand the benefits of nuclear energy in space exploration. One of the most prominent benefits of nuclear energy when it comes down to space exploration is how incredibly versatile it is. You see, at the moment, nuclear energy can be used in two separate ways as a rocket propellant. The first of the two is nuclear thermal propulsion, or NTP for short, and the second is nuclear electric propulsion, or NEP for short. Nuclear thermal propulsion is the more conventional of the two, as rockets that use nuclear energy in this manner will effectively use a nuclear reactor to heat a propellant such as hydrogen. Afterwards, it gets expelled through a nozzle, producing the thrust needed to push the rocket. On the flip side, nuclear electric propulsion effectively uses electricity created by a nuclear reactor to power the ion thrusters. This kind of propulsion is a noticeably less potent when it comes down to speed and maximum payload capacity, however it excels in terms of range. These rockets will have an endless amount of energy at their disposal and will be able to be taken into deep space missions on a much greater scale than it is currently possible. As a result of all these benefits, many companies have started developing their own nuclear-powered rockets. Not just that, but NASA has also started heavily investing into this segment and incentivizing it too. So let's take a closer look at NASA and DARPA's nuclear thermal rocket engine. NASA and the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA for short, announced last year their joint venture to create and demonstrate a nuclear thermal rocket engine that will be used in space. The key reason behind NASA's constant push for nuclear thermal rockets is the streaming towards the conquest of Mars, as well as the general growth of necessity for a long-range rocket system that would allow bigger space excursions. NASA and DARPA partnered on the DRACO program, which stands for a Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cislunar Operation, and their goal is to create the first fully functional prototype rocket by 2027. This rocket will use the aforementioned NTP propulsion system, as a mission such as a crewed expedition to Mars would only require a, on a broader scale, relatively short-range rocket. However, NASA and DARPA are not going to build the rocket themselves and interestingly enough, they did not outsource this project to SpaceX either. So. Who is going to build this rocket? You see, SpaceX simply was not interested in creating a nuclear thermal rocket engine, as they are far more focused on commercial and chemical rocket technology. They are far more content with developing Earth to Moon ready spacecraft instead of venturing on grounds that are far too foreign for them. 
In addition to that, SpaceX is also a fairly new company compared to both Boeing and Lockheed Martin, and they will need years worth of proving themselves before they become NASA's true right hand. On the other hand, Boeing has proven itself to be terribly unreliable and undependable, that is. You see, for the past decade or so, Boeing has been faced with countless issues concerning both their aircraft and spacecraft development, and as of June this year, they have officially put the final nail in their space coffin with the Boeing Starliner's catastrophic failure. That is exactly where Lockheed Martin steps in. You see, Lockheed Martin has proved itself as a solidly reliable company when it comes down to various military projects, F-35 aside, and they are extremely proficient in advanced propulsion unlike Boeing and SpaceX. And with a good record of accomplishment for producing and developing projects on time, much unlike either SpaceX or Boeing, you can believe that the first NTR will in fact see the light of day in 2027, as was promised initially. However, with that in mind, there are also some issues that arise when going nuclear. One of the biggest concerns with uh, this type of rocket is, well, of course, exposure to radiation. As the operation of nuclear reactor revolves around handling and managing radiation, it's very logical to conclude that, if handled incorrectly, the astronauts could be exposed to radiation, which could result in long-term damage and even be fatal. There is also the issue of public perception of nuclear energy. Despite being extremely efficient and extremely clean, the public is somewhat justifiably scared of nuclear energy. As a result, despite us believing that the first nuclear thrust rocket will be available by 2027, we still think that there is a long way before the public changes its outlook towards nuclear energy and, as a result, nuclear rockets themselves. And what do you think about this? What is your opinion on nuclear thrust rockets? Are they really the future or are they just another project in a sea of others that will eventually be dropped and forgotten in favor of more conventional propulsion methods? Be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. Also, while you're at it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like the video, as well as subscribe to the channel for all future updates on space exploration.